my axle. I sight is through the high drive. Deep center. Go, go, go. We're out of here. We're out of here. Say a player. Just like they drew it up in Hollywood. Caladros, the 3 2. Swing and a miss. And the Audubon Green Wave have upset the Kingsway Dragons. And this is it for good. The Audubon Green Wave are back in the Final Four. A gold pile on their side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DW Broadcasting's coverage of Men for From our entire crew, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, folks. All right, sorry about the technical difficulty, but my goodness, my word, it is opening day right here on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting. Our first of 64 games in this high school 2024 season. We're starting off with a bang. Two sectional finalists from last year, Bridgewater Raritan, Rancocas Valley. Rancocas Valley traveling up from Mount Holly after finishing second in the South Jersey Group 4 bracket. They lost to Eastern, winning that title. And now Bridgewater Raritan with their winningest season in program history history in 2023 in the 15th season under the head leadership of Max Newell. They went 23 and 7 last year, fell to Bayonne in their sectional final and now are ready for more blood. The Panthers are squaring off against the Red Devils with a great pair of arms on the hill for Rancocas Valley this afternoon. It is going to be uh, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, the junior, Matt Garino, on the hill for Rancocas Valley. And then as we look at our roster for Bridgewater Raritan, their starter is going to be on the hill, the eighth hitter and the DH. Number 24, that being Owen Crimmins, he's going to get the start. He's been, he was one of the stars for Bridgewater last year, and now he's going to get the opening day start here in 2024. I'm with my producer, Dominic Perry, this afternoon. Our backup game was originally Clearview and Gloucester Catholic, but the hour and a half ride up to Bridgewater was worth it. We went through all of the pouring rain on the New Jersey Turnpike, got off at exit 9, and 25 minutes later, we have arrived for our first North Jersey baseball game of the season. It's a clash between North and South right here on DWB. Again, Matt Garino, the starter for Rancogas Valley. Owen Crimmins, the starter for Bridgewater Raritan. Two sectional finalists from last year, 16 and 12 for Rancogas, 23 and 7 for Bridgewater. And as Max Newell enters his 16th season at the head of Bridgewater, we're going to see what he can do in his first game. The players are drying off the field. There's a little bit of uh, product on home plate to make sure that we can still play today. It's been a light mist all morning. It was a little bit heavier down in South Jersey when we left around 8 o'clock this morning and now we're here we're up north and we're ready to play ball it's Rancocas Valley and Bridgewater Raritan coming up next on Dan Wilkins Broadcasting we'll be right back
All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Missed the starting lineups to start, but for Rancocas Valley this afternoon, or I guess still this morning, their starting lineup starting off with Jake Barletta in center field batting leadoff. Angel Rodriguez, the right fielder, batting second. Connor Whithall, the shortstop, batting third. At the cleanup spot at third base is going to be number 11, Michael Tudorice. At the DH spot, batting fifth will be number seven, that being the junior, Carter Klezchuk. Pitcher will be Matt Garino at first base, batting sixth, is going to be, uh, excuse me, Mr. Scott Owens. At second base, number 14, Liam Young. In left field, uh, that's gonna be Brody Deiter. And behind the plate, number five. That's gonna be senior Jelijah Viant. Here we go. The 2024 season about to get underway. Owen Crimmins versus Jake Varletta. First pitch is popped way up and way out of play. Owen one. Maybe I shouldn't have parked my car there. Excuse us in these first couple of frames as we're going to be adjusting our cameras and kind of fixing up our, our stuff here. There's a foul ball, 0-2. A rainy Monday here at Bridgewater. It's been raining all morning with raining overnight. You know, talking to head coach Max Newell, he was saying it didn't rain overnight, so the field should be in good condition. But they've made a lot of improvements to this field over the years. Yo, two. Up and away. Got a great sound to our right of the Rancogas dugout. Usually we don't set up right next to the dugouts, but the outfield fence is a little too high, and we didn't want to set up that far away from where we were parked. This is in and it's two and two. Here we go. Crimmins, a two two. Fastball low. Three and two. about a hot start. Rancocas Valley was down 0-2 in the count, and then they come on back and get themselves a full count walk to put a runner on to lead off the ball game. Here's Angel Rodriguez, the senior. Rodriguez batted 244 in his junior year. Four extra base hits, 13 walks, a total of 19 for 78. A career 254 mark with Frank Cocos. And the pitch. No. Breaking ball. No. This is down. No. 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 One on one. No. Low, one away. Two and one. You got to imagine the ball is harder to grip in the rain. And just because it's been steady rain all morning, even in the bullpens, it's hard to, it's hard to grab a dry baseball. They're going to throw a cross to first on a pickoff attempt. And they say no. Runner goes, throw down to second, is on a hop. It looks like he beat him and he got him. That runner is erased with a rather muddy red jersey and there's the first out of the season on a stolen base attempt by Barletta. Three balls, one first. 
three and one to Rodriguez. Here's the pitch. Slam. Yes. High, and that's ball four. Here's Connor Whittle, the sophomore shortstop for RV. In his freshman year, batted 203 with a 261 slugging mark, four extra base hits, 11 RBIs, 14 for 69. Also had a 5.2 uh, innings pitch with a 3.71 ERA and a limited sample size. Appeared in three games on the hill last year versus Camden Catholic, West Windsor South, and Allentown. A game that ended 21 to 20 in favor of Allentown in an instant classic back in May of last year. So and two. And the pitch. Slam. Yes. Curveball dug right back into the zone, and that is the second. Uh, first strikeout, rather, but the second out of the inning. Bridgewater dealing with a little bit of traffic, but trying to find ways out of it. Swing and a miss on the first pitch. 0 and 1. Time is coming. That was kind of a tough situation for Crimmins there because he had to hold on to the ball. And time was called, but a late one. That was a little up and in. One one. Michael Tudorice, the senior, class of 24, takes down. Tudorice, 217 average last year, 11 RBIs, 10 for 46. Two extra base hits, one hit by a pitch. Top, way back and way foul. Two and two. I mean, it's, it's no secret that RV lost a lot of starters last year. And as sectional finalists, you know, looking to, to get back into the powerhouse name of South Jersey Big Four. They leave a runner on. One runner was out trying to steal second, but Owen Kermans with a two strikeout first inning. Bridgewater gets their first ABs of 2024 right after this. No score.
Bottom of the first inning, Bridgewater gets their first hacks of 2024 against number 25, the junior Matt Garino. No pitching uh, stats on NJ.com are available to Garino's name, but even though he may be untested in the scorebook, we'll see how he fares in this first go around versus Bridgewater. It's going to be getting started with Devin Goldberg, the center, field, uh, center fielder. He'll get started here. Excuse me, Goldberg is a shortstop tonight, but he had a 400 average in 2023 as a junior. A homer in each of his sophomore and junior campaigns, 331 career mark and a 430 career slugging percentage. And speaking of home runs, there's a fly ball to left, and it's gone! Devin Goldberg answers on opening day with a first pitch rocket to left, and it's 1-0 Bridgewater. We were just talking about the long ball, and he stomps on the plate, mobbed at home, and Goldberg, the leadoff man, with a swing of gold. It's 1-0. On Unbelievable. What a shot to left by Devin Goldberg. And that is the kind of inspiration that wins games, and first pitch is gonna be a strike. For Bridgewater, but talk about a start that gets your team riled up. First pitch homer. Chopped foul. Had a hearty swing there by number 26. Lenberg. Versus Lemberger switching jersey numbers from 30 to 26, and that one's going to be a backwards K. First strikeout for Garino. There's one away. So here is Matt for tour. Popped up foul. 0 oh 1. Fator, the infielder, and a senior. 374 career mark at the dish. Three homers last year. 17 walks, 28 RBIs. That curveball slips high. And it's 1 and 1. As we said, Bridgewater had a hot start last year, started the season 11 and 1 before losing to Rutgers Prep in the semifinal round of the Somerset County Tournament. 1-1. One, one. That one is fouled straight back. Fator led the team in RBIs with just one mark above senior Matt Moore, who had 27. But also was up there in at bats with 81. That was the second on the team behind none other than Devin Goldberg. That one's fouled back. Well, the scoreboard just shut off in right field. <laughs> so, Dom, you got one and two? All right. Sometimes you got to do guesswork here, but it's 1 0 Bridgewater in the bottom half of the first. 1 2. High and in at the letters. Again, apologies for any technical difficulties we may have. The rain does have an impact. Here's a rocket out the center field going back. That ball is going to be off the wall. Going to second will be Fator, and he's got a one-out double. So talk about swinging a hot bat. A leadoff homer by Devin Goldberg, and then a one-out double by Fator. Sets Bridgewater up for success and a chance for a big inning. 
as now it'll be number 33, Joe Letko. 367 average last year. And again, like we said, we are behind a chain link fence, so it sometimes camera forces itself out of focus. I apologize. We're going to try to fix that as we go. That one was deep, and that one's headed for the football bleachers down the third base line. It's 0 and 1. A one. Runner goes, throw to third, is going to be just a little late. Had a good one coming in, but just couldn't hang on to it. And that puts a runner on third with a chance to make it 2 nothing, 90 feet away for Bridgewater. Matt Garino kicks and delivers. Breaking ball. Got him folded. And that's a two strike count. On deck for Bridgewater will be Jaden Rosado, uh, Rosado Jr. Breaking ball misses. As we said, you know, the rain is settling down a little bit, but it's been steady all day, really. Like we said, when we left uh, this morning from Audubon at 8 a.m., good hour and a half drive. Um, and it's, about, it's just over an hour for Rancocas Valley, but for us, you know, hour and a half, it was raining the whole way. It was really bad up to Turnpike. I was afraid I was going to get a call from Max Newell and say, you know, game's done. There's a strike three inside corner. Looks like a two seam with a lot of run on it, and Lepko is retired. Two away. I mean, this could very well just be a battle this afternoon where it's either home run or strikeout. You know, we call it a three true outcomes game. We've seen a couple of them this year. We saw one on Saturday where um, Lehigh Carbon in game two, it was 14 to 10 the final, total of four home runs hitting that double header, including a grand slam from Nick Napoli in game one. The Camden County won 13 to one. Lehigh Carbon won game two of that doubleheader, 14 to 10. Rosado swings and misses. Two strikeouts from both Garino and Crimmins. Looking to get out of the jam with a runner on third. Already one run allowed on the home run by Goldberg. He's got good break on that curveball. I mean, it's that's probably his his best pitch. Just that he's got good velocity, but if you can have a curveball, especially in these wet conditions, and have it stay in the zone, that can really make you successful. That one's outside. As we said, Garino did not have any appearances, at least at that NJ.com notes. So we don't know much about this guy. Don't know if he's committed or anything or if he's uh, been scouted well, but he seems like he's a guy that people should put on their radar. Line drive out to left field. There's a base hit. Scoring is Fator. And that's an RBI knock for Jaden Rosado, and it's 2 nothing Bridgewater. A lot of cancellations down south. Clearview and Gloucester Catholic, which was our backup game this afternoon, got moved to a 3.30 p.m. start time. Since Rosado is the catcher, they do have a pinch runner aboard, a courtesy runner. That is going to be Joey Letgo. Since he was the last out prior to Rosado, a nice fastball and a swing and a miss. By the right fielder, Matt uh, Kachowski, or Kachaki. My apologies. Hey, 
That one just missed. The scoreboard is back on. They must have just had some power issues with it or whatever, but it's one-on-one. Kachaki, and then number 23, Joe Spira. Here's the pitch. Nope, throw over to first. That's a little late. RV's going to bat five, six, and seven in the second, which will be Klezchik's, Owens, and Young. of it, goes the other way down the third base line. Can he grab it in time to throw? Not in time. Infield single. An awkward way to get a hit, but it works just the same, and Bridgewater keeps the inning alive with two runners on after a base hit by Kachaki. So here's Joe Spira. That one is high. 1 0. Give it a right, kid. Here's Pitch. Ooh, Trev's a little inside. This is where the control really starts to be a big factor because you do not know what's going to happen next in this frame. You don't know how many pitches you're going to get. And also for Renko Valley, you know, your bullpen might not be that deep to start the, to start the, um, the season. You, know, you don't know if it's going to be, if he's going to throw 50 pitches, if he's going to throw 60. You don't know if you're just going to throw him at 80 or 90 until wears his arm out. But there's a strike. Two and one. Like we said, RV batting five, six, and seven in the in the second. The Bridgewaters put together a good offensive onslaught in first, including that home run from Devin Goldberg. Start the game. There's another strike at the knees. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Big spot for 25. Matt Garino. Full count, two runners on. Looking to make a big impact, a big splash here in opening day. And looking to get out of the jam with minimal damage. 3-2, that one skips in. It's ball four, and the bases are loaded. No visit yet from RV. This is the eighth batter of the inning, that being Frankie Verano. Owen one. Outside. In a tight zone tonight. Verano, the senior outfielder, 5'9, 190. Two homers last year. I mean, that just shows how deep of a lineup this Bridgewater team is. You know, they, they've got home run hitters in the eight and nine spots. They got a little bit of everything everywhere on a 4, 4, 484 mark, 15 for 31. Even in a small sample size, he really put the opposing, opposing pitchers to work in 2023. That one just missed. Calling it by the letter of the law, and it's 2-2. You just got to think here if you're if you're Bridgewater, you know, got the bases loaded, you really can put you really can put the game away in an inning, but just not the first inning. You can't let yourself get complacent, even if you put up three, four, five 
five runs, but that's not going to matter. Garino gets out of the jam, two runs allowed, and RV helps Bridgewater strand the bases loaded. A home run by Devin Goldberg gets the season into high gear. It's 2-0, Bridgewater after one. In 2023 as a junior, a homer in each of his sophomore and junior campaigns, 331 career mark and a 430 career slugging percentage. And speaking of home runs, there's a fly ball to left, and it's gone! Devin Gold. Here in the top of the second, Bridgewater Raritan leads 2-0 as Owen Crimmon still in a groove, had two strikeouts in the first. Matt Garino had three, including the one that retired the side. His first challenger in the second is going to be Carter Kleskis. Kleskis, three RBIs last year, six for 27. That was outside. 222 average in his sophomore year. And now he's taking up the DH spot as a junior. That one's 2-0. Best thing you can do for RV, though, is as a team that lost a lot of their starters in 2023, you know, plate discipline is something that you can do to win games. One of the best things you can do as a team that knows that you're a little bit depleted than you were last year, the best thing you can do is just be careful. You can't swing at the first pitch that much. You can't be too overzealous or confident in yourself. I'm not saying there's a bad part of being confident. The confidence is always a good thing. But, you know, know, know where your team is and work with what you have. And that was a smart at-bat there by Clusters. He knew what he had in him. Lefty-lefty matchup. He knew the advantage was to the pitcher. So he didn't take the bat off of his shoulders, and he got a five-pitch walk. That's smart baseball. Because what's the worst thing that happens? You draw a walk, that's great. And you get on base, start a little rally, and now you're in business. There's a fly ball deep but foul down the left field line. Oh, and two. Scott Owens, the first baseman for RV with an 0-2 that skips in, hits home plate. And this is the thing about high school baseball, especially in the rain. You know, you don't get um, a baseball every pitch like you do in Major League Baseball. You're not going through 60, 70 baseballs in a game like you do in the Major Leagues. Every time the ball hits the dirt, every time the ball makes contact, you throw it away, you put it in the auction shop, and you give it away to a fan. This doesn't happen here. You know, these pitchers have to work with not-so-perfect baseballs 
and that can either affect your grip, it can improve your grip, or it can worsen your grip, depending on how clean it is. But there's a strikeout for Owen, strikeout number three for Crimmins. There's one away. Setting up shop now for Liam Young. First pitch to Young. First ball right down Broadway, 0-1. It's been a good game so far. Just Bridgewater got the early edge, and those kind of innings can really propel your team, especially now that you've almost batted around. Eight of nine men came up to the plate for Bridgewater in the first. So now that you've seen him once, top of the order comes up like Goldberg, who took him deep on the first pitch. I mean, that's confidence right there. You know what he's going to give you, and you send him deep. Speaking of, there's a line drive in the left center field. It's a base hit. Liam Young gets a knock, and that's two on for RV. Here's the catcher, Brody Deiter. Deiter, I apologize, he's in left field. We're gonna have a mound visit here between pitcher and catcher. Of course, a lot more, uh, a lot more New York gear for these Bridgewater fans. A lot of Yankees, a lot of New York Rangers. Of course, where we're, where we're used to is uh, Philly land. A lot of Giants and Jets fans up here. It's foreign territory for us here in South Jersey. This pitch. Fun, but the ball gets away. Dider is trying to contest, but the ball hit his foot, and they'll give it to him. Base is loaded on a hit by pitch. Dider was saying it hit my foot, it hit my foot. You could read his lips. And they give it to him. Now the infield coming in a little bit, meeting with him, but RV, after gaining a two-run deficit in the first, quickly striking back with a walk by Kleskitz, a single by Young, and a hit by pitch by Dider to load the bases right away for Elijah Bayan. Did not have any at-bats in 2023 as a, as a junior. Has scored five career high school runs and has five career stolen bases. But this is an opportunity for these guys to see something a little different. And the 1-0. They're going to throw behind the runner. And he is safe. That's a dangerous play. The upside would have been great, but the downside of that could have been an error. And it could have brought a couple of runs in, but Bridgewater's a little bit rattled now with one out and the bases loaded. Number nine hitter by it. Again, you know, bottom of the order, you have to start thinking in terms of great plate discipline. You know, we saw it at the beginning of the inning with Klesch. Klesch checks a five pitch walk, saw a couple good pitches, but he held off on him, and that made the difference. The rain has picked up a little bit more. But it looks like now we are still good. By the way, with this live stream, we just passed 1,700 subscribers on YouTube. We really appreciate the support. That was at the letters, and it's called the strike, two and one. We do appreciate the support, though. We drove an hour and a half up to Bridgewater Air to see this game, and it's a strike. But Coach Mac Max Newell from Del Ran, he knows this drive very well. And the 2-2, two -two. straight up. That one's headed to the parking lot. Two two. Pop straight up. Infield fly is called. And it is caught. So no tagging there, but that'll be a P6 by Viant. And the bases remain loaded. With two down. Now turning it back over to Barletta. He walked in his first appearance. 
We were talking to Coach Max Newell, you know, like we said, he's from Del Rand, he's from Burlington County. You know, he knows this drive very well. It's about an hour for him, it's an hour and a half for us. Fly ball, left, left field playable though, calling for it, and it's in there. Owen Crimmins gets out of the jam with a bases loaded fly ball to left to get out of it. It's still a goose egg for RV, 2-0 after one and a half. Well, the uh, coaches are applying some extra product to second base. They also added some down the first base line. They're 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 uh, dead set on making sure that this game starts and this game uh, continues. As we said, you know, we were talking to him this morning. He said, I know that drive, you know, coming from Del Ran. He's about an hour away and he knows that he didn't want to uh, to waste our time so he said you know if you don't think it's it's a good drive for you to make and you don't want to go go to your backup game i won't have a problem with it and he said you know we'll, we'll give you some gas money if you if we have to turn around on the highway and you know we appreciate the hospitality um you know but we wanted to make sure that we got this game we don't cover north jersey often and um this is an incredibly good team a good matchup of sectional finalists from last year um you know people that made it to the end of the road with their bracket but they are still applying that, uh, I don't know what it's called, speedy dry or whatever it might be. Um, the product, whatever you want to call it, down it near the shortstop position. Because the rain did pick up a little bit during that last frame. It has, it has been on and off. I mean, it, it, it has never stopped raining. Excuse me, it didn't stop raining at any point. All it did was picked up a little, slowed down a little. It's been ebbs and flows 
But you know, we were talking to Max this morning. It was just that it's a light drizzle, and it picked up a little bit. But it was it was bad in South Jersey. It was pretty uh, pretty moderate rain that canceled a couple of games like Gloucester had had in Township. That got canned. And they're gonna throw one more warm-up pitch. This broadcast is brought to you by Harper Driving School. Driving to success with a 95% first time success rate for your road test and your written test. Visit today at Suite 4 of Harper Driving School, uh, excuse me, Suite, po Suite 4 of the Total Turf Experience Complex in Pittman. We're just looking at the weather a little more here in, here in uh, Raritan and Somerville. It's gonna be pretty consistent but it's going to be pretty light. It will be out of here by around 1.32 o'clock. So if this game holds at a steady pace, then we'll be good to go. That's a foul ball drilled. Jelaja Vient in the mask on that foul ball. I believe that also got a piece of the umpire. So the number nine hitter and center fielder, Kellen Comline. Hot shot out to second base. That's going to trickle into center field for a base hit. Dider just got under it. He tried to hang on to it, but to no avail. So a base hit at the bottom of the order by Comline. This is the fifth hit of the game for Bridgewater Raritan. Now Garino checks back at first. Now with Goldberg, who had a home run on the first pitch of the first. He's not gonna give him that chance on a breaking ball. Oh, and one. But as a pitcher, you got to have a goldfish memory. You got to have a very short term memory when it comes to these kind of situations. You know, we hit a homer off you last time, but you can't have that in the back of your mind. You can't have that anywhere in your mind. You just have to be thinking as if you've never seen him before, and you got to throw him a little something different. Got to, you know, mix in a couple curveballs in there because he didn't get to see the curveballs. Took a fastball first pitch and drilled it to left field. So, what else are you supposed to do? It's a 0-2 count to Goldberg. After a two-run first by Bridgewater, started off on that shot to left. Up and in. One and two. Close call there. Three, two, three. Three, two, three. By the way, that home run to left by Goldberg went 344 feet, according to our Google Analytics. Swing and a miss. He got him. One down. So here's Lenberger. But the dimensions of this field are pretty hitter friendly. 314 down the left field line. In center field at its deepest part, 377. And then down the right field line, another hitter friendly 311. I mean, we've seen more hitter friendly parks in South Jersey. So this is not exactly anything new, but you know, you see Haddonfield is 404 to center. Cherry Hill West is also very similar. Another Olympic conference team at 402 to the deepest part of the ballpark. But then you got like my home park, Audubon, deepest part of the park is 365 to left center field. And then you got Pittman, Alcyon Park, deepest part of the park is 355. That one is a spiker. It drills off of the chest of the end. I think just he held on to that one a little too long, and that will be a wild pitch to advance Comline to second base. So Lindberger struck out his first time. Now looking to get a little bit of remedy here and add on to the barrage for Bridgewater, already with five hits in their first go around of the order. It's back at second. Very interesting dugout setup here. A lot of open air. I mean, these guys are covered, but 
Got a lot of room to pass through. Swing and a miss. I mean, this is one of those guys that's going to swing. That's going to swing out of their shoes no matter what. You know, he's a middle of the order guy towards the top, but he's he's one of those guys that you're going to be able to rely on for a good swing every single time he comes up. But Leberger had a small sample size last year as a as a junior. Two for six with three runs scored, a 333 batting average, four RBIs. There's a fly ball to left center, uh, left field, going back to the wall, and it's caught up against the wall in left. And a good save out there. What a save by Deiter. And there's one away. Or excuse me, two down now. That's a dangerous play. You got nobody around you to tell you how far you are and whether you're going to crash in the wall, especially on a on a chain link fence. That's a, that's a couple of lacerations that you could get yourself in trouble with. There's a rocket on a curveball down the left field line. It's slicing and it's fair. Comline coming around third. He scores. The throw gets into second base. It will be not in time. The ball trickles away, and it's an RBI double for Matt Fator. He's got two of them tonight, and it's 3 0. So here's Joe Letko. Struck out his first time. And, you know, Bridgewater put together a home run, a strikeout, and a double and a strikeout, and then an RBI single by Rosado, another single by Chikaki, or Chikoki, and a walk by Spira, and then the strikeout of Verano to end the inning. I mean, Garino, he's got four strikeouts, but the only caveat is that he's got three earned runs on the board. On that home run, throw back to second, not in time. Again, that home run by Goldberg and the RBI by Rosado, and now the RBI double by Fator. Sends things into full motion here. 3-0 Bridgewater in the bottom of the second. Ground ball down the third baseline. Chopped it, and it's foul. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right back over the pitcher's mound and into center field. Rounding third and scoring is Fator. The throw is cut off and it reaches the plate. Now they throw back to second and that's going to be an RBI. Jo uh, Joe Letko makes it 4 0. And now coach Dan Haverstick coming out here to talk with Garino. The bullpen for both teams is obstructed from view, so we can't see if anybody's warming up. So back-to-back -back RBI. It looks like a pitcher and catcher have returned from the bullpen down the third base line, so we may very well see something soon. But they keep Garino in. They've got confidence in the junior right-hander. And we'll see what he can get out of the system. Coming in from the bullpen, though, was number one, Logan Schumard. So Garino looking to get out of the jam. He's allowed two runs in both the first and second innings. They're now looking to break the streak with Jaden Rosado, who had an RBI single, the last run that Bridgewater scored in the first. Fastball hit out to sec, uh, hit out the short rather. He's busting it out of the box. The throw is high. Hits off the back fence. And coming in and scoring is Letko. Five nothing. Uh, how about this? Bridgewater out to a hot start. So with Rosado, the catcher, reaching. He did not advance past first, but now Nick Turchi 
for the second time today as the reserve runner as the lefty. Matt Jacoki stepping up here. There's a strike. Oh, and one to Koki. That one's downside or inside and down. I guess that's a little bit of a combination between those two, but one and one. That's a fly ball out to deep left field. It's slicing towards the corner, going back, and it is caught in left. Nice play out there to track that one down by Deiter. But the damage is done. Five runs in two innings for Bridgewater Raritan. We'll see what RV can respond with in the third. It's 5 nothing Panthers. Top of the third, 5 nothing in favor of Bridgewater Raritan. Rancocas Valley loaded the bases in the second, and remarkably enough with the bottom of the order, but a fly out to left by Bartletta retired the side and got out of the jam for Owen Crimmins. But now, you know, the story's a little different for Bridgewater. You know, like we said, these two teams are on pretty similar ground. Bridgewater's got the early edge, but I think Rancocas Valley, if they manage their men well, as after losing so many starters in 2023, you know, that's that's the big story of this Rancocas Valley team is that can they hold up in what is basically a new era for them? You know, they lost Graham Adams, Brady Bartletta, uh, Shane Cannon, Jace Deiter, Joe Deneen, Gavin Gilmore, Michael Lum, J uh, TJ uh, Mantevalcano, uh, Trevor Myers. They basically lost a lot of their guys, and they lost almost every single starter that they had. That one is high. Two to Angel Rodriguez off of the lefty. There's a strike, and that's what makes a left-handed pitcher in your arsenal so valuable. 
that he can just work and work and work. And if you have a lefty dominant lineup, you know, that's why he's such a good starter is that at the high school level, lefty lefty matchups are very rare. But when you have a lefty in your in your arsenal, it's like finding a pot of gold. If you can utilize your lefties right, no pun intended, <laughs> then it ends up really, really setting you up for success, especially in an opening day situation where you've got Rodriguez, who's a lefty, you've got um, Kleschik, who's a lefty, a couple of others in the order as well who bat from the right, uh, bat from the left side. And you could just have your way. That ball went under the chain link fence, found a gap, and went into the Bridgewater dugout. But that's the thing about Rancocas Valley is that you can rebuild your hitting pretty easily. And that's going to be ball four to Rodriguez, his second walk of the day. So here's Whittle, the shortstop. But Rancocas Valley only had one pitcher in the 2023 season who recorded over 10 innings and was not a senior. And that was Matt Corbeck, who had 17 and two thirds, 5.15 ERA, five walks, 12 strikeouts, and 13 earned runs allowed. And he didn't appear in all that much. He only appeared in six games in which RV went three and three in them. He appeared in that infamous late April game versus Allentown that ended 21 to 20. The game that surprisingly did not have a home run from Allentown's Jack Sweeney. I mean, Sweeney led all of New Jersey in home runs and is returning for another year. He, he led all, all of Jersey in, in returning home run leaders. He had nine of them in 2023 with the Redbirds of the uh, Colonial Valley Conference, the CVC. There's a 2-1. Swing. That's swinging out of his shoes there on Whittall. Already has a strikeout to his name. Crimmins with three strikeouts this afternoon. As we were talking about another lefty hitter, you know, this was a smart move by Max Newell. Didn't go. That was a close one. That was a close one. And even Max Newell took, a, took exception to that. There's a line drive in the right center. And you can bear the fruit of your labors. That's going to be a base hit. Lefty on lefty, Connor Whittle. So still nobody out. Rosado calling a play here and trying to keep the party alive with Mike Tudorace. Shows bunt. And that was a low, low bunt. It results in a foul ball. And I think he was determined on, on making contact with that ball no matter what, whether the ball was out of the zone or not. And time is called. I think Rosado lost a contact. You can see he, he was trying to fiddle with something in his eye. I don't know if it was a contact or if it was with something. I mean, those things are are hard to get. You might, might have to get a reserve in, uh, reserve contact, that is, but... He might have just gotten something something in his eye. I'm not sure. Like I said, could have been a contact, could have been something. He's trying to... They are, you need drops. Is it a contact? Yeah, we weren't sure what it was either. We didn't know if it Yeah. They are, you need drops. So he just said he's good for now. Come on, Mike. Just on, hope that doesn't affect the play too much. With Tudorus. Oh, no, Mike. Oh, no, Mike. 
Two and one. I mean, Rancocas Valley was in the same situation earlier in the game. Actually, just one inning ago in the second, they had loaded the bases but did not score. That was inside. Best thing you can do here, though, is especially with your righties at the plate, work Crimmins to the bone. Foul off as many pitches as you can. Hold off on as many pitches as you can. If you're not 100% confident that that ball, as soon as it registers in your brain, it's not going to be right down the middle, don't swing at it. It's been a tight zone all night. And take advantage of that. Swing and a miss. Throw down to first. Behind the runner. He is safe. Oh, close call. That's a good shoot, JR. Wasn't even close. Two balls, two strikes. And after a little bit of controversy, they'll work back with it. With two on. Swing and a miss. So same, res same, same result, <laughs> just not on a pickoff, instead on a strikeout. Tudorice is retired, one away. Hey, Carter, come on. Carter worked a five-pitch walk in the, in the second inning. Got a leadoff walk that helped spark that bases loaded mark for Rancocas. He takes that one down, but he, he seems like in both at-bats, he's been really good on the plate discipline side of the ball, and that's what you need for RV right now. You need to have good plate discipline. Don't get too giddy in the box. Just wait for your pitch, because Bridgewater's definitely had, a, had their fair share of swings and misses that have been more of, of gaffes than, you know, competent swings, but anything they can do, you got to counteract that, and you've got to just say, hey, you know, where, what are their weaknesses and where can we hit them you know in their pain points where can we hit them in their vulnerabilities there's a swing and a miss on a curveball one and two after the strikeout by Kleschicks, uh, rather by uh, Tudorice excuse me <laughs> that is strikeout number four for Owen Crimmins come on seven there, strike three. There's strikeout number five, and it's back to back for 24. And here's Scott Owens. He also was a strikeout victim in his first appearance in the second. No at bats, but a 3.66 ERA for the lefty. He had 28.2, 28 and two thirds innings, rather. 15 earned runs. Only had three unearned runs the entire season. 29 strikeouts and 461 total pitches thrown in his sophomore year for the class of 25 juniors. They're going to throw that behind the runner. This time, he is safe. That one was definitely a lot closer of a call, but it was the correct one. Looked like he got in under the tag. Hey, Gator, let's go now. I'm asking what he's doing. One on one. Owens takes it low. I mean, Crimmins is really just trying to hammer that curveball in, and he's trying to he's trying to make you he's trying to fool you. And he gives you a lot of he gives you a lot of fastballs, gives you a lot of off speed, but that curveball has fooled a lot of hitters tonight. And that's part of the reason why he's got five strikeouts. That's a strike. Best thing you can do here is give him what you got and maybe if those strikeouts did come from a curveball, go back to it. Change up misses. Masato just, you know, JR just kind of telling uh, Crimmins to settle down a little bit. Last thing you want to do is load the bases again. That loads up the pitch count and would force Bridgewater to the bullpen probably in the fourth or fifth. Both runners go. Ground ball foul. Ball was a little high at the letters. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Two runners on for Rancocas Valley. They've put nine runners on base in the first three innings. Here's the pitch. That is ball four. Crimmins having trouble with the with the free pass. That is his fifth walk. And here's Liam Young with the bases loaded. Deja vu from inning number two. A swing and a miss, a little early on that, 0-1. Let's go, Lee. Backside, Lee, let's go. Hey, Reed, hard pull here. Hard pull. 
A one. Swing and a miss again. Another early swing. 0 and 2. I think he's a little bit out of rhythm here. Just he gets the curveball, gets it down. Don't be surprised if that's what he gives. Because he's working fast and he's working hard and ready. That was a curveball, but it slipped out of his hands, and it's one and two. That one was in the other batter's box. I mean, he's swinging hard. I think he wants to put four runs on the board with one swing. That one goes to the backstop. And he holds it there. <laughs> two and two. And a good way to fight back here for RV. He was down in the count 0-2 and now has battled his way back into contention with a 2-2 count. Trimmins delivers again. There's a ground ball out to second base and for the second time in as many innings, Rancocas Valley leaves the bases loaded. Trimmins gets out of a huge jam and going to the bottom of the third, it is 5-0 Bridgewater. Logan Schumar, the new pitcher for Rancocas Valley here in the bottom of the third. Bridgewater put up two runs in the first. They've put up a three spot in the second. And after two frames, the final line for... Um, I apologize. I had a brain fart for a second. Number 25, uh, Matt Garino. Final line is two innings, five innings pitched. I'm sorry, two innings, five hits. There we go. That's uh, that's a little better. But if any positives, got five strikeouts on the board. It's been a strikeout heavy game, but it's also been an offensive heavy game for the home team, not as much for the visitors. Oh, that one got him in the hand. And that's a hit by pitch. Hit the bat. Hit the bat. Hit the bat. Hit the bat. 
Listen to this. Yeah, now he. I mean, if you want to be technical. That's terrible. Well, after after that. Hey, don't worry. I tell all my kids to cut their hands before they go back. I'll just show you how to walk up. Obviously, a very frustrated Dan Haverstick there, showing his case. The original call. I mean, the call changed a couple of times. It was first that it was a hit by pitch, and then it was that the ball hit the bat. Hey, Bragging, come on, Bragging. And then. After that, and Bridgewater contested that, saying, hey, no, we all cut the hand. And Haverstick went out and uh, made his case. But best, th best way you can respond to that is just not with words, but with actions. It's after Spira got hit. Ferrano swings and misses. First strikeout. So Spira has reached base twice with a walk and a hit by pitch. And now Verano has his second strikeout. And you could hear that one from a mile away. Here's Kellen Comline. Had a single in the second, came around to score. Schumar, the junior class of 25, time is called. Uh, boy. That's the right way to do it, you know. You don't want to, you don't want to disrupt the pitcher's motion, so you just throw the pitch as normal. Just it doesn't count. <laughs> Schumard with no prior history on NJ.com, but a junior this year, a number one. Don't see a lot of pitchers who wear uh, single digits, at least at the professional level, but something that's actually pretty commonplace in high school and collegiate baseball. Yeah, I'd say just high school, actually. But it depends on how much liberty you have in deciding your jersey number. It might just be dependent on class or by rank, whatever you want to call it. Calling for it at third. Oh, that was a tough play, but it is caught. It's not even like the wind really brought it down. It was just a tough play all around. But regardless, taken in at third by Tudoris. And we go back to the top of the order. Back to Goldberg, who homered in the first inning to start this fireworks show for Bridgewater. Curveball right in there. Beautiful pitch by Schumard. So both of both of RV's pitchers are making their high school debuts this afternoon. Again, Schumard and Garino both had no uh, prior stats on NJ.com. Throw back to first. He lost his footing a little bit. Luckily, the throw hangs on. Looks like his back foot kind of trickled off the mound a little bit. Didn't have sound footing. And that's the difference between a pickoff and an error. Always a difficult line to walk. There's a strike. 0-2. Oh Devin Goldberg, as we said, you know, he's a he's the kind of guy that we didn't think was gonna be the first to hit a home run this year, but Senior had one home run in each of his past season, of each of his past two seasons. One in his sophomore year in 2022, and another in his junior year in 2023. That 2022 shot came in late April in a 16 to 10 win for Bridgewater over Scotch Plains Fanwood. 
Runner goes, throw down to second on a couple hops. It's gonna trickle out to second base. It goes into center field, but the runner stays planted. And he is in there at second base on a stolen base. And look at that jersey. Oh my goodness. That's that's gonna have to be in the laundry for a little for a little more than a while. <laughs> He went from the White Sox to the Padres, just like that. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing that it's raining. I mean, that he, he got stuck in the mud. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was that was something. But Joe Spira now at second base on the stolen base. Curveball, Goldberg pops it up. It's foul. That goes deep into the parking lot. Don't forget our next broadcast will be tomorrow with Audubon and Paulsboro. 4 p.m. start between the two Colonial Conference powerhouses. That'll be our first Audubon broadcast of the year of our total of 17 games that we're covering for them in the regular season. Here's Petch. Swing and a miss. Goldberg down on strikes and down on a knee. We've got a strikeout for uh, Schumard, Schumard, and that retires the side. No runs allowed for Bridgewater, and it's now 5-0 after three. We'll be right back. Top of the fourth inning, Jack Lanham on the hill. Here for inning number four. Had no pitching appearances in 2023, but did have two at bats, scored one run. So today's trivia time question here in the top of the fourth is, what is the highest grossing baseball movie of all time? Is it A, Field of Dreams, B, 42, C, A League of Their Own, or D, Moneyball? The answer will be revealed in the bottom of the fourth inning. I decided to reuse that question from last year because two completely different teams, two completely different audiences, something a little different. Oh my goodness, that was a bullet off the bat. The third baseman fell down trying to track the ball. And now that jersey's even more caked. It's an infield single for Deiter. And here is the end. Look at this. Hold on, let's let's get a closer look at that. The front and the back are just absolutely caked in mud. 
Jay. Oh my Get goodness. Get on top of one here, kid. That might break the clubhouse washing machine. <laughs> Here, rounding out the order, Vient pops up a bunt. It is a fair ball. The ball hits the leg of the catcher, Masato. The throw is in time, but the sacrifice is successful as it moves Dider to second. That was like an accidental perfect bunt right there. It just looked like it was going to be an easy out, and then the ball hit Rosado's leg, caromed in the other direction. Good job, though, boy. You got to move. Come on, Jake. Back on top of the order for Bartlett. Bartletta, 0 for 1, had a walk and a line out to left his first his, uh, first two times up. Sato setting up front and center. No one misses. 2 0. Hey, sit on it, kid. Let's go. There's a rocket in the left field. There's a base hit. The ball caroms in the left, rounding third, but holding up. And that will be a base hit to put the runners on the corners for RV. So Brody Deiter is 90 feet away from being RV's first run. And the man who has walked twice tonight, Angel Rodriguez, is now up for his third appearance. That was a rocket by Bartletta. I mean, he just rocketed it out to left in between third and short. Rodriguez takes a two-seamer outside. And, you know, Jack Lynham here, Jack Lynham rather, Again, no prior pitching performances on NJ.com to note. I mean, this is what's important about your out-of-conference games and the fact that this is opening day for everybody. You know, everybody's 0-0. You don't worry about 23-7. and You don't worry about 16-12. and You worry about the fact that you're playing your first game of the year and it's time to test out some new guys. And especially because a lot of the scrimmages were canceled with rain and a lot of inclement weather plaguing this past week and even plaguing the opening week. You know, they say April showers bring May flowers. Well, they better. But this pitch. Rodriguez pops it up, left field side. Runners ready to tag it third, and it's out of play. I was gonna say that was that was a smart move there to not catch it. And I think Matt Matt Holiday popularized that move of like, you know, if you got a fly ball down the left field line and it's foul, don't catch it. Charge a strike. That run doesn't matter. Let that run hold. Force him to score on a ground ball or anything else of the sort. Two strike count with one away to Rodriguez. Lanham delivers, that one's outside. And we're gonna have another mound visit here. Now, Max Newell has not left the dugout at any point to talk to his pitcher, except in between innings. So we have not had an official mound visit by the coach, although it does count against your, uh, it, depending on how long it is, and if it's an infield visit, it counts against your uh, your total for the game. It looks like the rain is almost out of here. Fly ball, left field side. This one should be fair. Hugging the line, it is caught. Running from third and coming in to score. That's run number one for RV. It comes on Brody Deiter, scoring on a sacrifice fly. And it's 5-1. Let's go, let's go, boys. Angel Rodriguez with a sack fly to left. Brings in Dider. Here's the lefty Whittle. Outside. Five one. RV on the board in the third. 
There's a strike. Hey, it looks like the rain is done. We got a 55% chance at one, but it might just be a light mist. And it looks like it's going to be completely out of here in the next half hour. So a game that was almost canceled is now saved by Mother Nature. A swing and a miss. Whittle is struck out inside of retired, but Rodriguez puts RV on the board on a sacrifice fly down the left field line. It's 5 1 going to the bottom of the fourth. All right, now, bottom of the fourth, it's time to reveal our answer for today's first trivia time of the year. Today's question was, what is the highest grossing baseball movie of all time? The options were uh, Field of Dreams, 42, A League of Their Own, and Moneyball. The correct answer is C, A Field of Dreams. I'm sorry, uh, A League of Their Own. <laughs> The only baseball-related movie to ever gross over a hundred million dollars at the box office. With Schumard still on the hill here, facing Matt Lenberger. It'll be Lenberger for Tor and Letko for BRHS. I'm getting the ground ball I'm that just it. dies in the mud. It holds up down the third base line, almost trickled back fair. But it's 0-2. All of those movies that we gave as options are in the um, are in the top five. This came from a list of uh, the rap. Oh, that's a good take, Maddo. So they had a top 20 list. Two strike count. Swing and a miss. He got him. One away on the strikeout by Schumar. Let's go. The Lemberger strikes out back to back K's for Schumard. And here's for Torres. Had two doubles, two for two. An RBI to his name tonight. And a 5 1 game in the fourth. Here's the pitch. There's the strike going one. Oh, that ball skips away on the return back. Luckily, no harm, no foul with nobody on. But the top five. A league of their own, 107 million. 42 had 95 million. Moneyball, 75. 
The Rookie, which was the only one that wasn't an option, the Dennis Quaid film from 2002, had 75, and Field of Dreams had 64. That was your top five. Six through 10 was the Bench Warmers, Rookie of the Year, Bull Durham, Angels in the Outfield, and the first Major League. 11 through 15 was the natural, fever pitch, hardball, million dollar arm, and trouble with the curve. And then to round out the list was uh, for love of the game, bad news bears, the sandlot at 18 with only 32 million at the box office, Major League Two and Mr. 3000. So, but yeah, people forget that that was the only ever baseball movie to gross over 100 million at the box office. That's a ball. Uh, you There's a fly ball to deep left field. There's a rocket going back. It's off the wall. Picked up, rounding first and slipping, falling down. They throw back to first, but they pump fake and hold on. So a near disaster just turns into a single for Fator. And now here's Letko. Okay. So Fator now two for uh, three for three rather with Joe Letko at the dish had an RBI single in the second as a part of Bridgewater Ayrton's three run spot. Oh. Bridgewater wanted a balk, but it is not called, and it's 1-0. You can't do that. You can't do that. Good job. Well, the controversy continues to stir in these middle innings. That's the 1-0. There's the strike. 1-1. One, one. Inside. One away, runner on first for Bridgewater. Runner goes. Throw is a little wide, but it gets right in there. And it's a stolen base for Fatour. Let's go, Joe. Hit it hard somewhere. Come on. Three balls, one strike. They throw back to second. Well, he held onto the baseball. Moving along nicely here in the bottom of the fourth, 5 1 Bridgewater. There's a pitch. Foul, straight back. That one hit the game changer feed back there, or almost hit the game changer. Three and two. That phone better have a case on it. <laughs> that was awfully close. The cat is full. I thought I saw, oh my goodness, I see blue skies above me. It's an Easter miracle. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes, one out. Bridgewater with a runner in scoring position. Here's the pitch. Looks back a couple times, dances a little, and the pitch. Breaking ball got him in the hand. Second time, not the, fir not the first time that that happened to Bridgewater, but the first time that happened to Letko. The second hit by pitch for Bridgewater this afternoon. Bridgewater Raritan started off last year with a 11 and 1 start. They lost to Rutgers Prep in the semifinal round of the of the Somerset County Tournament. And here's the first pitch to JR Rosado. There's a pop up. Shallow left center field. Who's got it? 
Dider makes the catch and everybody holds. Two down. And here is Chikoku. Hit it hard, kid. Had a single and a fly out in his first two appearances, one for two on the record so far. They had a 10 and two record, Bridgewater, in the Skyland Delaware division. Their lone loss in the month of April in conference play was against Roxbury. Well, Roxbury's in the end jack, but still. They started off 3-0, lost to Roxbury on April 8th. As here's a fly ball out to left center field. This one's gonna split the gap, but it is caught. Back-to-back -back fly balls, back-to-back -back catches by Brody Dider, and the side is retired. We go to the top of the fifth. Still got a couple more frames to play, but Rankoka's Valley trails by four after four. We'll be right back. Top of the fifth, first pitch is a strike to RV. I keep getting fooled by the April Fool's Day posts on uh, on Twitter. I saw something that said World Series is going to be played at a neutral site in 2025. I saw something about Trevor Bauer to the Phillies. Keep having to check your sources on April Fool's Day. But that's not a joke. That is a base hit. It got trapped in the mud, and the third baseman, who has been covered in mud for a couple innings now, continues to add to his collection. And it's going to be a base hit here to start off the frame in the fourth for Tudor Ice. Tudor Ice had, had two strikeouts to his name and now responds with an infield single. So here's Kleskers. A walk and a strikeout so far. First pitch, outside. One up. We are going to try to pull off a double header tomorrow. I'm not sure how it's going to work because I mean, we're just going to try our best. It's going to be more raining in the morning than in the afternoon, but we might try to schedule something. Right now, the only scheduled game for tomorrow is uh, Audubon Paulsboro at 4 o'clock on Tuesday. We are not scheduling a game on April 3rd. And then April 4th might be a doubleheader. We're right now talking with Lenape, seeing if they can uh, stick us in at 11 o'clock on Thursday versus Cherokee for more Olympic Conference baseball. But we're going to have to look at what games are going to be good on Thursday. You know, this entire week is is really good for doubleheaders because you've got um, spring break for everybody. It's like there's Cumberland, Deptford, Gateway, Gloucester, Ewing, Allentown, Central Regional, and Southern. And those are just the 10 o'clock games. Holy Spirit, Hamilton. There's uh, Hamilton, rather. There's a lot of games 
that we can fit in and then still make that four o'clock game in Audubon. So many different opportunities. This pitch popped up left field side. That's foul. Two strike pitch after the leadoff single by Tudor Ice. Outside. That's something that BR's got to work on here is, is the control. You know, last thing you want to do, give up a hit, give up a walk, and next thing you know, you're giving up hit after hit, and they're putting run after run on the board. Things can unravel incredibly quickly. The pitch from four. That is ball four. No outs, and for the choked up Kleszczyk, that's going to be his second time appearing on base via the free pass. He had one in the second, a strikeout in the third, and now a fifth inning walk, setting it up for Scott Owens. Scott Owens with a strikeout and a walk to his name. I mean, a lot of free passes this afternoon from both sides. Come on, Scotty. Bridgewater Ayrton had three walks in the first inning. So that is the seventh walk that Bridgewater Ayrton has surrendered tonight. But RV, they've only got one walk to their name and two hit by pitches. So they have not been giving out many get out of jail free cards, to say the least. He's <laughs> got one of one to Owens. Again, what's going to have RV win this game is going to be plate discipline. They've just got to be smart with what they see. They know Bridgewater's throwing a little wild, but they have to hold back on their temptations and just let everything fly, you know, like watch a couple pitches, you know, maybe take the first two or three and see where you're at. If you're down 0-2, fine, swing, you know, do what you need to do. You've got to wait for your, got to wait for your time. There's a ground ball to third. Throw across, it's in time. Good play by Spira. Take care of the threat, and it's a 5-3 ground out for Owens. One away. Here's Liam Young. Young with a single and a ground out that ended the third. Back-to-back -back innings in the second and third that Rancocas Valley left the bases loaded. But if anything, for, for Owens, he moved the runners on. He moved the, moved the runners up, and now RV's got two runners in scoring position with only one away. There is a strike, 0-1. Good curveball to make him duck a little. Again, Liam Young 0 for 2 in this one. Nice. Another curveball catches the zone. 0 and 2. Oh, he went around. He got folded. Young down on strikes and there's two away. Here's Dider. This broadcast is brought to you by Garden State Pet Center. Make your pet have the happy and healthiest life possible with organic toys and along with that food. Uh, excuse me, organic food, <laughs> toys, cages, accessories, and more. I get that script all jumbled up sometimes. Visit seven days a week on the 200 block of Whitehorse Pike in Audubon or visit online anytime at exoticpetsnj.com. Oh, my God. <laughs> I keep forgetting there's a fence there, you know? It's a natural reaction. Maybe once I'm covering baseball for like 20, 30 years, maybe I'll be immune, but I'm not there yet. Oh, and two. Well, Dider looking to bring some life back into the RV offense. Fly ball right field side and foul to the parking lot. That's going to be a long walk for a JV player. <laughs> He's going to grab that baseball. He's probably headed out towards the road. Oh, it was deep down there. Still a two-strike count. 
pitch curveball. And it hit him. It took a second, but from what we saw behind the plate, it definitely grazed the jersey. And that counts. So bases are loaded for the end. Hey, five. Hey, kid. Hey, Jay. It looked like his jersey being a little loose kind of put the fold of the jersey. But hey, it counts. Whether you like it or not, it counts. Here's Vient. Here's Pitch. Strike one. Hey, brother. Tuesday. Tuesday. Hey, Fog. 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 Hey, Wow. But unfortunately, they're at the bottom of the order. That is a tough situation for them. Sit back. Let's go. Do a job, Bob. Hey, hit the scoreboard, kid. Hit the scoreboard. Just a quick infield meeting here. Two strikes, two outs. Again, the third time today, RV has had the bases loaded. They've put one run up in that span. We'll try this one more time versus Lunham. Breaking ball, he got him. Strike three. And for the third time tonight, RV leaves the bases loaded. It's been a matter of frames and a matter of inches for Bridgewater Raritan, but they have gotten out of the jam 3-4-3. Three, three. Going to the bottom of the fifth, 5-1 Rancocas. I'm sorry, 5-1 uh, Bridgewater. All right, you can read that. Bottom of the fifth inning. A mud caked Bridgewater here in the fifth. Starting off with Joe Spira. I mean, he has been through the, the woodworks today. Had a hit by pitch earlier that actually had a laceration on his hand. Hot shot foul. He has reached base in both appearances. A walk and a hit by pitch have been his stats this afternoon. All 
So a difference in opinion, but a strikeout for Spira, and there's one away. And that's what the appeal's for. It's a well-utilized tool. Here is Frankie Verano. Speaking of strikeouts, he's got two of them today. There's a ball. One up. There's a strike, one on one. This broadcast is brought to you by Tommy D's Home Improvement. Make your dream kitchen a reality with wholesale kitchen cabinets and countertops at heavily discounted rates compared to big box retailers. Visit today at 612 Creek Road in Belmar next to the 42 on ramp. Swing. One and two. And if you are a small business owner interested in becoming a sponsor of Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, we are selling commercial slots for as low as $250 for a six-month package. You can reach out to us at our email at thedanwilkinsshow at gmail.com. All of our social media and contact info is in the description of our YouTube videos. Verano 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Here's Kellen Comline. One for two, as a single in the second, and a pop out to third in the fifth. And now that RV's kind of settled in, after a rocky first two innings, and now the fellow in relief, having himself a day. One, one. Foul back. Okay. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on. RV cruising here in these middle innings. Oh, and he misses. Two, two. You know, as we said, two runs in the first for Bridgewater. That home run from Goldberg really kicked things into high gear. But things have kind of mellowed out now, you know. You've got your you've got your big bucks out of the way. You've taken care of the situation. I mean, you're down by four runs, but in, with six outs to go, it's not an insurmountable feat by any means. Two strike pitch and a hot shot hits off of the pitcher's glove, but the throw over to first is in time. And the side is retired. Five frames through. We've got two more to play here up north in Bridgewater. RV trails 5-1.
here in the sixth. RV Trail 5-1. And a new pitcher for Bridgewater Larry. Number 37, Corey Ribble. Come on, Jake. Come on, two six. It's going to get started out in the uh, sixth with a one, two, three for RV. Barletta, Rodriguez, and Whittle. He's got some firepower in him, but they have been brought to the mountaintop and then thrown off it so many times. This is a hot shot in between third and short. The ball skips off of Spiro and goes into left center field. Rounding first and now stopping, putting on the brakes. He falls down, and now he holds up at first. A leadoff single, Barletta. Not the first time that we've seen somebody slip off of first base. But now two for three for Barletta here in the sixth. And it's Rodriguez now looking to continue the rally for the visitors. Hey, Rod, you never know. Come on, three. Let's say three. Hey, Rod. Hey, Rod. Hey, Rod. You're on it, Barry. Pops foul. Hey, Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. Hey, Rod. Come on, Find a way. Corey Ribble getting himself a little more work here. The senior right hander delivers a strikeout, one away. So here's Whittle. See, now what was a disadvantage in the first couple of frames with Crimmins on the hill with a majority lefty lineup, now it turns into an advantage because you've got mismatched. Whoa, that one skips in. Well inside. Almost took out a tibia and it's 1-0. Ribble a 3.08 ERA in 2023, 36 and a third innings pitched, 16 earned runs, two unearned, 32 strikeouts. First season of pitching that recorded stats. There's a ground ball out to second base. It is bobbled at second. They throw to first, and he's out. Bang, bang, play over at first, but it goes in the favor of BR, as now it's two away. That's as close as you can get out there at second. So Bartletta advances to second. And after the ground out by Whittle, here's to the race. One for three, as that one is a cricket catch, skips in. Well, Corey, here we go, make a pitch. Tudorai struck out his first two appearances and added a single in the fifth. Come on, six. I would say Come on, two to race. Go walk, go 11. Come on, hey, my goal. Hey, one. 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 That one misses. Good eye, kid. Good eye. Come on, two. Come on, two. Come on, Come now, two. Come now. Hey, two. Hey, trade with him. Hey, dude, that does. Hey, Nice. Swing and a miss. That's it, Cor. That'll hit. Come on, Cor. Come on, Cor. Come on, Michael. Hey, put down early. Let's go work it. Come on, one. Come on, one. Yeah, let's go, two. Let's here. Two outs. Runner on second for RV. Looking to drive that runner home. Hey, one. Hey, one. Ground ball foul on its two strikes. The only run that's come in for RV was on a sacrifice fly to left by Angel Rodriguez back in the fourth. So they have not driven in a run on any hits. Hey, find a way, kids. Come on, Wally. Come on, Michael. Good, dude. Come on, Wally. Six hits for RV, one run, and a grand total of 11 runners left on base. That's a right in the shoulder 
and Tudorice reaches base again, setting up a two-runner situation for Klezchuk. Bridgewater Raritan started off their offense on the first pitch of the first with a home run to left by Devin Goldberg. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Bridgewater Raritan with five runs on nine hits. There's another strike. Fastball right down the pipe. One and two. And with a couple of scouts in the building tonight, they have paid all eyes to the senior right-hander who nearly had a sub-3 ERA in 2023. Let's continue that mark this year. That's a foul ball. Skips off of Rosado's mess. Two strikes, two outs, two on and four. Run game, 5-1 in favor of Bridgewater Area. Hey, Last kicks. Pops one up, a late swing. Hooks down the line, and it is caught by Joe Spira. Great catch, Joe. A great catch, cycling back, and the inning is over. RV leaves two more runners on. That's 13 in six innings. They have just not had their night in base running. We go to the bottom of the sixth, 5-1 Bridgewater. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth in the waning moments of this ball game. This has been an excellent performance in relief for Rancocas Valley. I mean, you know, they have, uh oh, Devin Goldberg fly ball at the left. Playable though. And it is caught back up against the fence. Nice catch out there by Brody Deiter. And it's one away. Goldberg one for four. Pinch hitting for Lenberger. Issue mark. Michael. It's number two, Michael Taylor. Michael, here we go. Hey, Mike, Mike. Swing and a miss by Taylor. No relation to the Nationals outfielder, obviously, but 286 average and a small sample size last year. Both of his hits were doubles. So a 571 slugging percentage, two doubles, two hits, two RBIs, one walk, and a four-run scored mark in a two for seven small sample size campaign. Hey, 
There's a strike, nice curveball. But if there's going to be an honorable mention, it should go to Logan Schumard because he has held down the fort and has held Bridgewater at bay. They scored five runs in two innings. They took Garino out of the game. They put him in the, in the third, and now he has been unstoppable. No runs. And if he gets these next two outs of Taylor and Fator, then he's going to have four shutout innings for a guy that did not have any appearances in any prior season with RV. As we said earlier, there's been a, there was only one pitcher last year who was not a senior and recorded over 10 innings pitched. That was it. Everybody else was a class of 23 guy. And now, keep an eye on Schumar because he has really impressed us tonight here in their opening game of the year. And we might see them calling his name a lot in 2024 and 2025. 2-2. Two -two. Strike outside corner. Talking about a nice one there. That one paints the black. And there's two away. Two left time, Brody. So here's Matt Fator, three for three. Stay hot, Matt. Come on. Stay hot, Matt. Stay hot. Two doubles and a single to his name so far. That one hit the knob of the bat. There was no arguing that one. There was no getting around it. <laughs> oh, and one. And Cocos Valley with 10 strikeouts across all six innings today, across Carino and Schumar. Oh. outside, 1-1. One, one. Bridgewater Raritan, as we said, five runs on nine hits. And only one error on either side, and that was by RV in the second inning. Popped up, right field side, heading towards the corner, and it is caught. So Vitor, a very impressive three for four. He might be a candidate for Harper Driving School player of the game, but Rancocas Valley has three more outs to make their name known on opening day. It's 5-1 going into the what could be the final frame. We'll be right back.
Top of the seventh, Rancocas Valley down 5-1. First pitch from Corey Ribble. It's a swing and a miss, an emphatic one at that. From Scott Owens. I apologize. Top fly, right field side for the pinch hitter, Austin Wright. Young is on deck, but they decided to throw an audible in there with Austin Wright. The junior infielder, four for 10 in a small sample size last year. One double, three singles. Speaking of singles, that's in the right center field. It could be more than a single. He rounds first, pumps on the brakes, and that's a way to get the seventh started on a knock. Hey, come on, Lee. Let's go, Lee. Hey, Ellie, I'm going to work. Go, Lee. Go, Lee. Go, Lee. Come on, Lee. Hey, Lee. Right away, kid. Let's go, Lee. I'm going to work. Hey, shorten it. Get that shoulder, Lee. Yo, shorten the swing. Go up. Go. Sign hit the scoreboard, kid. Come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. Swing and a miss by Young, and it's 0-1. Runner on first, nobody out here for RV. Outside, he throws behind the runner. This time, he's safe. That was an excellent throw from the knees. All good intentions, but the result was not what they wanted. And it's one and one. Sometimes you gotta take risks in that world. There's a strike. Exactly what you need there. Off speed catches the zone and it's one and two. Don't forget our next broadcast will be Audubon and Paulsboro tomorrow, Tuesday, April 2nd. It's a four o'clock start. That one is fouled straight back. Still a two strike count. April 4th, looking like a double header. Either Lenape, or, Lenape and Cherokee, an 11 a.m. start time on, on Thursday to 4th, or possibly Burlington Township versus Ken Saucon. Those are all possibilities for us. But either way, 4 o'clock, Audubon and Haddonfield will be the 4 o'clock broadcast. That's a swing and a miss. And Young down on strikes one away. His second of the game. Let's go, two. Let's go, Brody. Here's Brody Dider. Has been plunked twice. Split that with a single. And he is technically one for one. Now he's going to be two for two. Shoots this one in the right field through the gap. Holding it second is right. And now RV's got some life in them with two runners on and one away. Another pinch hitter subbing in for Elijah Vient. Versus Jalen Alvarez. Jalen, hey, Jalen. Come on, Jalen. Hey. Come on, Jalen. Time's Here we go, two, four. Hey, Jalen. Hey, now. Hey, let's see here. Find a ball. Come on, four. Come on, Alvarez. Alvarez. Strike one. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, oh. Oh. Heads up. No, no, Austin. Keep your head in it. We're good. Come on. Hey, two, four. That's not you, kid. Put a barrel in one kid. Go, Jalen! Go, Abby. Inside and called the strike. One more kid. That, that was a good pitch, I will say. You just gotta, just gotta pump the zone here. You can't have any funny business with two on and with the pinch hitter. Just gotta lock in. Yeah, Speaking of, there's a fly ball to left center field. It is caught in the left. A good catch, bringing both runners back, and we're down to the last call. Two outs, two on in the seventh, but a perfect time for RV with the lineup turning over to Jake Barletta. 
This is the perfect time. Two for three. A walk, a line out, and two singles in this one. But RV's only run came on a fly out by Angel Rodriguez, which turned into a sacrifice fly. Here's the first catch. No. No. 1-0. Come on, JB. 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 1-0 outside, 2-0. What a cap this would be to the game. 13 runners left on base for Rancocas Valley. Nine of them were with the bases loaded. Three separate innings have ended via bases loaded out. There's a strike. Two and one. Just on the corner. Two and one from Ribble. Line shot, right center field. That one gets down. Shoots in the right field. Coming around third is right. He will score. And RV is back in business. It's 5 2. RBI single at the top of the order from Jake Barletta. And now Angel Rodriguez is up, and Max Newell is out on the hill. And I think this might call the end for Corey Ribble. He might just be talking it over. This is the first full team mound visit with Newell out there all game. The infield and catcher, they've kind of patrolled themselves. But Barletta with his third single of the game and the first to have an RBI attached to it. And it's 5 2. What a game this has been. RV at the 11th hour clawing back to make this a save situation if another pitcher were to come in and replace Corey Rebel. Rodriguez, two walks, a sack fly, and a strikeout. It's 0 1. Up until about two minutes ago, Rodriguez had the only RBI for RV. It calls time. Your box, come on. Let's go, Rod. Come on, Come on, Jake. 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 Come I think they're getting somebody ready in the bullpen, but I don't think anybody's ready to go yet. Here we go. 5 3 game for Connor Wall, the sophomore. Hey, 12. Rodriguez with two RBIs. This guy out is loud. First pitch swing is. Well, check swing is called. That's 0 and 1. Come on, Connor. No balls, one strike. From Ribble. Popped up, foul. That one's into the parking lot. It's 0 and 2. We've got the last call. Two runners on. Two men out. In a 5 to 3 game, RV has clawed away at the deficit in the 7th at the 11th hour. But one more chance. Inside. One and two. And they're going to talk it over. Can't get much closer than this, especially in the middle of the order. This has been an excellent opportunity for RV to chip away. As we said, you know, there was really no, no sign of offense from either side after the second inning, you know. RV got one back in the fourth on that sack fly, but nothing more until now. Two run game, two outs, two on. Number three man, Goodall, down in the count. 
and a chopper foul right through the legs. He stays alive. If the inning continues after him, Michael Tudorice, two strikeouts, a single, and a hit by pitch is next. One, two. Strike three on the outside corner. And Bridgewater Raritan, despite a late scare, escapes opening day with a win. They beat the South Jersey Group 4 runner-ups, Rancocas Valley, 5-3. to three. And even though they had a lot of life at the end of the game, I mean, props to RV for putting something together at the end. Just at the end of the day, just did not have enough to get over the hill. 5-3 is the final time of game, 2 hours, 24 minutes. Bridgewater Ayrton improves to 1-0. They will end up uh, having their next game against North Hunterdon, 11 a.m. tomorrow on April the 2nd. Rancocas Valley, 16-12 last year. They are now 0-1 on the young campaign. They play Cherokee in their season opener on Wednesday, April 3rd, away at 10 a.m. Their next home game is actually not going to be until Thursday versus Camden Catholic. Stay tuned as we've got our Harper Driving School post-game show and the player of the game interview right after this break in just a few. Tommy D's Home Design Center has opened a second location on Creek Road in Belmar. Operating in Philadelphia for over 25 years and now expanding into South Jersey, Tommy D's is the place to go for kitchen cabinets, countertops, and cabinet accessories, heavily discounted compared to big box retailers. Stop in, take a seat, and watch as our experienced kitchen designer makes the kitchen of your dreams right in front of you. Tommy D's is the best in the business for quality kitchen countertops and cabinets that fit all budgets. Call us today at 856-210-9504 or visit the new location in person on the corner of Creek Road and Harding Avenue in Belmar next to the 42 on-ramp. Garden State Pet Center is an independently owned full service pet store. Our specialty is promoting companionship between people and animals by providing the healthiest product choices available, including all natural foods, supplements that support and relieve health issues, and innovative products for pet parents. Our goal is to provide our customers with a relaxing environment, and while we're not striving to be the biggest store on the East Coast, we're striving to be the best. No other pet store will make you feel at home like we do. At Garden State Pet Center, we view pets as members of the family. We don't believe in fast, high pressure sales but instead matching up the right pet with the right owners as you are making a lifelong commitment. Together with our team members, we would like your visit to our store to be both enjoyable and educational. Simply drop in and take a look around. View the birds, reptiles, small animals, toys, food, cages, and miscellaneous items. Learn of the services we have to offer and decide for yourself if this is the store you'd like to call your home away from home. Victor Santucci, owner of Garden State Pet Center. Visit us today at 226 South Whitehorse Pike in Audubon, New Jersey. We're open seven days a week for all of your pets' needs.
Dom, you ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen, your Harper Driving School player of the game for Bridgewater Rare and Matt Fattori, an excellent performance on all sides. Um, the, you know, you guys, sectional finals from last year, uh, unfortunately lost to Bayonne in the, in the North uh, final, and you guys are now facing the South finalists from last year. You guys came in not really knowing, you know, what you guys would see out of these guys. You guys lit them up early. Um, first question, how did you feel out there today? We felt great out there. Conditions weren't the best, but we came out swinging early. I mean, for you and, and your position being out there and with the infield and uh, just with the rain in general, you know, the fact that at first base, it's got to be hard to, to stick it in yeah. the mud, getting the scoops on the ground balls, even just in pregame. You know, you guys had the tarp over the mound plate until 10 minutes before the game. So, you know, how did you guys adapt to those conditions, especially defensively and... Uh, just kind of play through it. Like, how, how did you guys fare out there with the with the rain? Yeah, we just try to stay solid out there, keep grounded, because we knew we were gonna slip it a lot. Because that first base, that's very slick over there. So, just try to run through everything, stay stay in the stay in the ground the whole time. You guys got a hot start early. All five of your runs today were in the first and second inning. Yeah. Devin Goldberg with a shot to left, uh, just about 350 feet out there, yeah. you know. And and you followed that up nicely with a double of yourself, three for four on the day, two extra base hits. Um, even with the rain, even though it's your first uh, true game of the year, you know, scrimmages don't really count, yeah. but they're just tune-ups. Now you're in the game for real. Um, you know, you seemed like you were hitting the ball well. How do you feel with the team in general? You guys feel like, uh, you know, Max is a great coach, and you guys seem to have good rapport. Is that yeah. is that the right thing? The coaches are great, and we're a bunch of dogs out there. We're going to hit all over you guys. So we just got to get out there, going to come out early, come out swinging, and then that's what we do. We're a bunch of guys out there. And you guys are going to be no stranger to South Jersey talent this year. You guys play uh, Cherokee in uh, mid-April at the Trenton Thunder Stadium. Yeah. Um, and Lawrence, I'm sure I'm missing another one, but, um, you know, you guys are, are very well-traveled. You know, I, you guys play North Hunter and tomorrow, but you guys are used to that uh, position in the Skyland Conference. After a 23-7 and year last year, most uh, program wins in a single season in history. You guys are now looking to run it back. What's the expectation? Come out, win again. Set the record, set the tone, set the bar for the next year. Keep winning. Just do our best out there. Well, that's great to hear. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming. And that's your player of the game from an hour and a half away up here in Bridgewater, Raritan. Your final score, 5-3. to three. Bridgewater takes down Ray Cocos Valley in a great classic from uh, from April 1st. There's no April Fool's joke here. We are live all spring break week. We've got Audubon and Paulsboro tomorrow. And on Thursday, we've got a doubleheader with potentially either Lenape and Cherokee or Burlington Township and Pensalk. And we got to decide which one we're going to do. And Audubon and Haddonfield on Thursday. And then a triple header on Friday. It's going to be the Camden County Tournament at Rutgers Camden. You've got Gloucester and Sterling at 11 a.m. Cherry Hill East and Collingswood at 3. Haddon Township and Eastern at 6.30. So from everybody here at Dan Wilkins Broadcasting, thank you for braving the rain with us. Thank you for um, going through the technical difficulties with us. We were able to make it out alive, and we were able to make it out with a great game on our hands. My social media coordinator, Anthony De Palma, our graphics crew, Gavin Van Rell, Caleb Lane, and Liam Nolan, my wonderful producer who traveled with me an hour and a half up here just to be a part of this game today, Dominic Perry. I'm Dan Wilkins. We will see you on Tuesday, Audubon and Paulsboro, our next broadcast. Have a wonderful and dry one, folks. Okay,